Howdy folks. You sometimes encounter the charge that the Catholic Church wrongly changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. This is a claim that's often made by Seventh-day Adventists, for example. But even when a person isn't accusing the Church of wrongdoing, the question can still arise. Why do Catholics worship on Sunday rather than Saturday? Here's the story. First, let's clear away a potential source of confusion. While it's true that people often speak of Sunday as the Christian Sabbath, this is a loose way of speaking. Strictly speaking, the Sabbath is the same day of the week it's always been, Saturday, though it should be noted that traditionally Jewish people have celebrated the Sabbath from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. Sunday is a distinct day that follows the Sabbath. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains... Sunday is expressly distinguished from the Sabbath, which it follows chronologically every week. For Christians, its ceremonial observance replaces that of the Sabbath. In Christ's Passover, Sunday fulfills the spiritual truth of the Jewish Sabbath and announces man's eternal rest in God. For worship under the law prepared for the mystery of Christ, and what was done there prefigured some aspects of Christ. That same paragraph explains why we celebrate on Sunday. For Christians, the ceremonial observance of Sunday replaces that of the Sabbath. Properly speaking, we're not celebrating the Sabbath on Sunday. We're celebrating something else, but it's something that the Sabbath points toward. What we're celebrating instead of the Sabbath is the Lord's Day. That's something that Christians have celebrated since the first century. In fact, in the very first chapter of the book of Revelation, we read that John experienced the inaugural vision of the book on the Lord's Day. He writes, I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. And he goes on to describe the vision of Jesus Christ that he received. For our purposes, the important thing to note is that he speaks of the Lord's Day as an already established thing. He expects his audience to know what it is. So, what is it? The first Christians commonly spoke of Jesus Christ as the Lord, and the Lord's Day is Jesus Christ's Day, the day he rose from the dead and his tomb was found empty. That's the day after the Sabbath, or Sunday. In Matthew's Gospel we read, Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulcher. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week is something stressed by all four Gospels. And that's why Christians celebrate the Lord's Day. The Catechism explains... Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Because it is the first day, the day of Christ's resurrection recalls the first creation. For Christians, it has become the first of all days, the first of all feasts, the Lord's Day, in Greek, He Curiake Hemera, in Latin, Dies Dominic Dominica, Sunday. We can confirm that the early Christians were meeting on the first day of the week from the letters of St. Paul, because he tells the Corinthians to take up a collection on that day of the week so that they won't have to take up a collection when he arrives. He says, Now, concerning the contribution for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. On the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up, as he may prosper, so that contributions need not be made when I come. He expects the collection to already be taken up by the time he arrives, so that they don't have to get people to give at that point. This indicates that the early Christians were meeting on the first day of the week, celebrating the Lord's Day. Does that mean that no Christians in the first century ever celebrated the Sabbath? 
No. Many Jewish Christians celebrated both the Sabbath and Sunday in the first century, just as many also practiced the Jewish dietary laws and ritual circumcision. St. Paul himself went to the synagogue services on the Sabbath so that he could preach the message of Jesus to his Jewish countrymen, because that's when and where they would gather together. But St. Paul is clear that Sabbath observance is not binding on Christians. He addresses this in a very direct way in the letter to the Colossians, where he writes, And you, who were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, having canceled the bond which stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. When St. Paul refers to the bond which stood against us with its legal demands, he's referring to the law of Moses. Christ canceled this bond. That is why he says, not to let anyone pass judgment on us in questions of food and drink, what's kosher or what isn't. And he says not to let anyone judge us with regard to keeping a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are the three types of days on the Jewish liturgical calendar, the annual feasts like Yom Kippur, the monthly new moons, and the weekly Sabbaths. All of these things had a symbolic value which pointed forward to Christ, but now that the substance which casts the shadow has come, Christ himself, the things that pointed forward to him are no longer needed. The Church Fathers agree. Thus, in the early AD 100s, we find St. Ignatius of Antioch writing, Those who lived according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's Day, in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. So, let's loop back to our original question of whether the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath. From what we've seen, it didn't. There was no medieval pope or council who said, we're now going to celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday. The weekly Sabbath is the day it always was, Saturday, the day before the Lord's Day. What's different is that Jewish Christians are no longer obliged to celebrate the Sabbath because Jesus Christ himself fulfilled it and all the other Old Testament ceremonies when he instituted the New Covenant. And he had the authority to do that because, as he himself told us, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Of course, Gentile Christians were never obligated to keep the Sabbath in the first place, because the law of Moses was given to the Jewish people and was only binding on them, in contrast to God's eternal moral law, which is binding on everyone. What we are obliged to celebrate is the Lord's Day, which fulfills the principles that were contained within the Sabbath, including the need to set aside adequate time for rest and worship. But there wasn't a medieval pope or council who instituted the Lord's Day either. As we've seen, it's something that dates from the time of the New Testament itself. Thus, the Catechism states, This practice of the Christian assembly dates from the beginnings of the apostolic age. The letter to the Hebrews reminds the faithful not to neglect to meet together, as is the habit of some, but to encourage one another.